Look at the markets this Monday and you would be forgiven for thinking crisis, what crisis as far as Ukraine, Russia and Crimea are concerned? You'd be wrong, according to Saxo's John Hardy. It's hotter than you think. Well, the market's not taking this uh, situation in Ukraine uh, very seriously from judging from uh, moves in the markets, perhaps outside of the Russian ruble. Uh, but we have a major confrontation here. We have, uh, of course, this Crimean referendum suggesting that uh, the Crimea is going to move towards uh, becoming a part of Russia and that it, we may be faced with a situation where it's de facto a part of Russia but it's not recognized as such uh, in the West and what does that mean in terms of sanctions which we may see the announcement of sanctions uh, as early as today what form these will take and I just don't see Russia backing off. So that would suggest a rise in the dollar and the yen as safe havens. It's not really happening, at least not yet. I would have expected the dollar would have been stronger uh, recently, and some have suggested that part of the reason that we haven't seen a stronger dollar response from all of this is that perhaps Russia was anticipating some uh, some crackdown or move from the U.S. side and was, was happy to sort of get rid of its, its U.S. Treasury. Uh, treasuries all in one go before uh, any of these sanctions came about, and we've seen some very interesting uh, moves in terms of Fed uh, holdings on the part of foreign entities, a $100 billion uh, drop recently. So that could be an element of this. But I would expect, yes, this is a safe haven trade, obviously, if risk, risk appetite begins to uh, shy away uh, for, uh, across the board. Also this week, watch out for the FOMC, another event risk, as John calls it. We have this, this very odd situation where we've seen a notable uh, weakening uh, and soft spot in the U.S. data. Uh, but the market and certainly the Fed seems to be willing to write this off as weather-induced, and we won't really know for sure until at least the March data cycle starting in April or possibly uh, even another month uh, of data. So that means we go with the default scenario, another $10 billion taper, uh, and the Fed will probably take the opportunity this week to uh, sort of get rid of these, these, uh, these numerical thresholds that have been a bit of an embarrassment and head towards sort of qualitative guidance.